The President of the United States is, in a way not truly seen since Woodrow Wilson a century ago, an active, belligerent, virulent, white nationalist dedicated to rolling back the rights of and ruining the lives of Americans of color. And as this DACA non-decision decision pawned off on the evil Keebler elf of Southern apologists shows, he is also a coward demanding that others, in this case Congress, do the worst of his dirty work for him. Who could have believed that a creature whose campaign began two years ago with a vile, psychotic assault on Mexicans and Americans of Mexican descent actually meant it? Well, millions of us did. Millions of us saw right through him and prophesied this moment when the screws would be tightened alike on the technically guilty and the ultimately innocent. Among those who did not see or who pretended not to see, the politicians, voters, analysts, reporters who as late as the weekend passed were still bleating about Trump's latest last chance to be presidential. And most importantly and disgustingly, the mainstream Republicans who rode Trump's evil coattails to victory and then figured the stain of his hatred would somehow wash off. The rest of these shameless opportunists who will be damned in history for what they were, enablers of the worst American president of all time and the worst elected leader in the history of all the Western democracies who set out to rapidly and thoroughly destroy the nation which had foolishly empowered him. And now it is up to those voters and those Republicans to atone for their sins that will damn them to hell, political or otherwise. They must defend 800,000 Americans who came here, or in most cases were brought here as children, nearly half of them before their sixth birthday, about whom the Bible, these Republicans endlessly thump without seemingly ever opening, tells us in Ezekiel, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. These Trumpian enablers must act in defense of these Americans who are far more worthy of citizenship here than Trump or the other diseased minds who have scapegoated them. And most especially, they must act in memory of the one who has come to most symbolize them all, Alonzo Guillen. He was a disc jockey from Lufkin, Texas, here since he was a teenager, most recently under the protection of DACA. He was 31 he traveled more than a hundred miles to Houston to volunteer in a boat to look for victims of Hurricane Harvey. He had disappeared into the night's water last Wednesday. His family kept vigil near Spring, Texas, and Sunday afternoon, Alonzo Guillen's body floated past them. He is dead, and at last word, the Trump administration would not let his mother into this country for the funeral. Alonzo Guillen died trying to save his fellow Americans in Houston while this filth Trump saw his chance to sell copies of the cap he wore in Houston for $40. You Republicans and you Trump supporters must now pass a veto-proof DACA bill. It became an Obama executive order only after it passed the House but was killed by the Republicans filibustering in the Senate. You Republicans and Trump supporters, especially those of you who are yourselves of color, must atone, not merely because it is the right thing to do after this DACA debacle, after the Nazis and their torches in Charlottesville, after the wall, after the Arpaio pardon, after the increased militarization of the police, after the calumnies and degradations of the last two years, after Alonzo Guillen, you must atone not merely because the man you support is a pig and you must now do what is right, but you must also do so in self-defense because you are next. Because the maw of racial hatred has proved time and time again in nation after nation to be insatiable. And you conservative black pastors and you right-wing Hispanic leaders who still support Trump and these racists today, you will find yourselves the victims of Trump and these racists tomorrow. The mothers kept from the funerals will be yours. The lawns on which the torches will burn will be yours. With DACA, the awful truth is fully and finally upon us. There are two kinds of Trump supporters today. There are the racists who hate Mexicans and all Hispanics and blacks and women who think the playing field has somehow been tilted against white men for half a century. 
and who have sold this hateful bill of goods to those in this society who have failed and are looking for anybody to blame. And then there are those other Trump supporters who do not have these vile hatreds in their blackened souls, but who are still willing to exploit and embrace those who do. And they are worse than the racists, because to them this is an opportunity for power. And on the existential subject of right and wrong, they don't care. Well, the time has come where you have to care. The sides are being chosen now. On the one, there are the principles and the values that have led this nation from the peripheries of influence to the primary place upon the world stage and kept her here for a century. Immigration, assimilation, the sum of the parts, the melting pot, in theory if not in fact, and the striving, awkward, insufficient, often failing, often tragic, but still the striving towards equality and the strength and genius it creates in this greatest of all nations and the courage and the sacrifice of the true embodiment of this nation, a man like Alonzo Guillen. And on the other side, there is hatred and prejudice and racism and white grievance and scapegoating and blame and revenge and stupidity and shame and inhumanity and sheer unapologetic cruelty, and most of all, there is this scum Trump. Resist. Remove. Peace.